Regarding treatment of uh, CSF rhinorrhea, treatment, if the leak is inactive or the skull base defect is very small, conservative measures can be tried that include medicines like acetazolamide, laxatives, prophylactic antibiotics, advising bed rest with head and elevation, avoiding straining, sneezing etc. And this can be continued for a period of 2 to 4 weeks. And if the leak is not closing or if there is active leak or there is recurrent uh, leak, recurrent CSF leak or there is chance of infection or meningitis, it is better to go with the surgery. So, historically there is intracranial methods via a craniotomy or there is extradural, extracranial methods. But the preferred technique nowadays is endoscopic repair of CSF leak, endoscopic surgery. And there is a wide range of variations and techniques used by surgeon. But there are some universally accepted basic steps which is needed for the successful closure of CSF leak. So we will go through that. So in surgery, <coughs> first is positioning of the patient for any surgery. First step is positioning of the patient. Positioning and all the preparation are similar to that of an endoscopic sinus surgery. That it was already dealt with so I am not repeating here. So after positioning and preparation. Similar to that of endoscopic uh, sinus surgeries. Second, if you are planning a lumbar drain. This can be done immediately before surgery or at the end of surgery. Okay, so LD, lumbar drain placement if needed. Third step is if you are using navigation, the navigation system is registered and it is accuracy is checked. Okay, navigation system, register navigation system and check the accuracy. Next is decondition of the nose. You can use 4% uh, silocaine with adrenaline or cocaine can also be used. So after the basic steps, the most important and the crucial step in the success rate uh, to improve the success rate of a, a CSF repair is wide exposure or adequate exposure. Wide exposure of the site of leak. Common site being cribriform plate or the ethmoid roof. So if it is a cribriform plate, this is coronal cut. So cribriform plate, then we have to do a middle turbinectomy along with a partial ethmoidectomy. And second, if it is in the ethmoid roof, again middle turbinectomy and a partial ethmoidectomy has to be done. Okay, so cribriform plate, do middle turbinectomy and uh, partial ethmoidectomy. Ethmoid roof, again, middle turbinectomy and, and ethmoidectomy. It is from frontal sinus, frontal outflow tract air cells or from the posterior wall of frontal sinus. Then the exposure is a bit difficult. If it is la more laterally placed, the endoscopic modified lotho procedure will be needed or if for adequate access and for instrumentation we have to go through both binarial axis or if it is very much laterally placed along with the endoscopic procedure an external frontoethmoidectomy approach through a lynch incision will be needed in any case an anterior ethmoidectomy with obliteration of all the frontal airflow tract cells is the key in the case of a frontal leak. So if it is in the spinoid sinus, then the approach is actually in a sequential uh, pattern similar to that of uh, frontal sinus. Okay.
So if it is in the front uh, spinoid sense, if it is very small and it is in the uh, medially located, then it is comparatively easy. We can go by a transnasal uh, spinodotomy. We can go transnasally with you, you doing an anterior wide spinodotomy will be enough. And in bilateral cases, it is better to go in a, if it is somewhat bigger than a bilateral uh, approach with resection of the spinoid rostrum will be needed. If the defect is in the spinoid roof, go with the partial resection of the middle turbinate with the posterior ethmoidectomy and that will improve, in, increase the exposure of that area. And if it is going into the lateral recess, especially in case of a well pneumatized spinoid, we may need a transpenoid approach. And for the transpenoid approach, first do a total uh, ethmoidectomy. Then after ethmoidectomy, go for a wide spinoidotomy. After that, go for a wide uh, maxillary sinus androstomy. Then, through the uh, wide uh, maxillary sinus androstomy, the posterior wall is approached. There, spinobelletin artery and its branches are cauterized and the posterior wall is removed. Approach, uh, go to the tergobelletin fossa and the content of tergobelletin fossa are uh, retracted laterally. And there you can see the median now exiting through the median canal and superolateral to the median canal. Median canal, superolateral. Superolateral to the median canal. You can see foramen rotundum and the trigeminal now. So the bone uh, at that area is removed either with the uh, bone rugus or with drill and then you can reach the lateral recess of spinoid sinus. So that is trans tergoid approach. So by all this, uh, depending upon the site of leak, the, that area has to be cleared. And the next step is resection of the meningocele or uh, encephalocele if any. For that you can use either a bipolar cautery or a radio frequency coblator can be used. And this coblator is it's a very nice instrument for this step. And this herniated cerebral tissue is uh, non-functional and there is no need to push it into the cranial cavity. So that can be fulgurated using either with the uh, bipolar cautery or with coblator till or become flush with the skull base defect. And the injury to the vessels should be avoided and complete hemostasis is needed. And the next step is definition of the defect. This again is very crucial for take up of the graft especially. So the all the margins of the defect, the mucosa along with the loose bony fragments has to be removed and all the edges of the defect should be cleared or identified circumferentially. Failure to do this step properly is the main cause of uh, failure in the take up of the graft. And after doing this, you will see the uh, underlying bone as well as the dura. Okay. And uh, after definition of the defect, the next is repair of the defect. Multitude of uh, methods are there. The usually preferred uh, one is a multi-layered closure using uh, various graft materials and flaps. In uh, CSF leak, in some cases for very small uh, defect and for inactive leak as I already mentioned we can go for conservative methods. If it is uh, not successful or for large and active defect this endoscopic repair is the uh, accepted treatment modality and these are the steps. The basically you need is wide exposure is needed then resection of the meningocele or encephalocele along with the definition of defect is the most important one 
and then after defining the defect, it is a repair of the defect. For that you can use multiple graft materials, it can be an overlay or it can be an underlay or inlay or a combined approach or you can use uh, uh, obliteration techniques and also there are so many pedicled uh, flaps are there for the repair of CSF leak.